in that I wanted to share with you guys something that I've, I've noticed over the years now um, that has really worked out well. And this is a great piece of advice for anybody out there who really struggles with different pests, um, doesn't have the greatest bug ecology perhaps in your yard. This will really, really help you guys because just a couple days ago when these guys were in full bloom, they were covered with three or four different types of parasitic wasp. I also saw um, actual wasps that you would probably find that sting people. Um, I also found bumblebees and other different types of bees. There's even a bee here I saw that I've never seen before. Uh, there's flies on these trees. There was also ladybugs. Um, and the ladybugs, you could probably imagine, as the tree wakes up, the pests are now waking up as well. Things like aphids, scale. So if you come in here and you get rid of all these pests, let's say you even use something like a dormant oil, which I still believe is a good idea um, for all of your fruit trees. But if I were to come in here with that dormant oil and get rid of everything, there would be no food left for the ladybug. And would I have ladybugs on my trees? I don't think so. I wouldn't have food for them, right? If you want to create an ecosystem and you want to have the right things in that ecosystem, you got to have food. So certainly the bigger things that we all think about are bees, right? And having enough bees for pollination. So bumblebees for me, the simplest way I've been able to do this and really make sure that I have enough bees every year, um, there are certain plants that you can plant that bumblebees really, really love. And the more of those plants you have, the more bees you'll have, the better pollination you'll have. Every year I see more and more bees. Um, so some of the things that I really like to plant and I think really is a no brainer is actually comfrey. And I have comfrey at different areas of the yard. I will point these, these flowering plants out, even though they're gonna look like nothing right now because it's the spring, Comfrey is one of the first things to wake up, to come out of the ground and actually flower. And it flowers from such an early point in the spring all the way to the end of the year, nonstop, that it gives such good bee food that it gives the bees really no excuse to leave. They're always here. They're always on my property. Um, let's see, the parasitic wasp though is my favorite. And again, there's three or four different species I consistently see here and they pollinate different fruit trees better than actual bumblebees. Uh, bumblebees actually don't even touch something like my jujube trees. The parasitic wasp loves really small, delicate clusters of flowers. So if you have many, many, many small flowers, that's what they really go crazy for. Um, I'd also mention, by the way, bee balm is a great one for bumblebees obviously it's called bee bomb uh, but the parasitic wasp not only does it pollinate different things it helps actually some of the fruit trees out and the persimmon apparently has something that's a psyllid that loves to actually affect the persimmon tree early in the spring and i think that psyllid could be actually affecting the fruit drop on some of these trees potentially um, but you'll see actual damage on the new growth of your persimmon. It's kind of weird and it deformed, um, miscolored and yellow and, and stuff like that. If you can actually get a good parasitic wasp pollination, it's said that they're actually supposed to help with that psyllid because the parasitic wasp, not only does it pollinate these trees, but it actually kills bad insects. Um, so that's my favorite is actually the, the parasitic wasp. It is many, many different ones that I've seen here. I don't know why I've seen so many different ones, but that's just is what it is. And I've seen them at different stages too. Just on this tree, there were baby wasps, there were adult wasps, there were baby bees, there were adult bees. So you can tell something's going on here. Now, the way that you can attract these parasitic wasps is very simple. Again, we have to give them food. So definitely something that we've been planting over here, just in this section of the yard, I can show you. We have things like sedum. I have two different sedums here. I broke them up 
separated them and put them in different areas of the yard in the fall. And now they're coming up. I also have right here some bronze fennel. Those many, many flowers, those clusters of flowers, those small flowers, those parasitic wasps love that stuff. So fennel's a good one. Sedum, sedum's a great one. And um, get some things that flower at different times of the year so you have food throughout the season. One that I'm really trying to get right now in the spring, and I really focused on planting them around my persimmon trees, is actually flowering alliums because they flower earlier in the season. And those give those parasitic wasps a bit of food earlier, uh, an earlier date of the season. And that hopefully will give them um, a reason to stay around my persimmon trees and kill that psyllid. So I don't know, we'll find out. I also have in here things like bee balm. This is, uh, yeah, that's bee balm right there. I even have borage I planted, which is great for bumblebees. Um, you name it. So I've really tried over the years now, and it's, it's made a difference every single year. The more flowering plants I have, different areas of the yard, the more I see these bugs, and the less I see of the bad ones. 